What's up guys, so a couple of weeks ago I did a video on how I color grade my footage in Adobe Premiere and you guys smashed it. We got over 200,000 views, so thank you so much for those of you that liked and reshared that video. Today what I wanna do is show you guys how I color grade S-Log3 footage just because a lot of you guys shoot with Sony cameras, so I think this would be a great tutorial to show you guys how to take footage that looks like this and make it look something like that. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this tutorial. It's got a lot of tips and tricks that I think are gonna be very useful for you guys. Now, before we begin, I do wanna take a little bit of your time to tell you guys about Skillshare. They are sponsoring today's video, and Skillshare is an online learning community with over 15,000 different types of classes in design, photography, and even video. Now, after you watch this, maybe you wanna learn more about color grading. Maybe you wanna learn a little bit more about your camera, how to master it. What is ISO? What is shutter speed? How to properly set white balance? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a couple of links down below to classes that I think are great for not only beginners, but also intermediate users. Now here's the kicker. If you guys use those links, if you guys click on them, you will get two months free trial to use their platform and basically all of the different classes so that you guys can learn as much as possible. That's right. Two months free trial. So make sure you guys click on those links, sign up and get as much knowledge as you can. Trust me, it's an awesome platform you will not be disappointed now in order to properly grade s log 3 footage you must know how to properly shoot s log 3 footage so I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks that have helped me to properly grade s log 3 footage we'll start off with setting your camera right with the proper picture profile now depending on what camera or what Sony camera you're using this could be either picture profile 6 7 or even 8 as long as you select it and you see s log 3 you are pretty much set to go now one thing about shooting an s lock 3 is that a couple things are going to happen. Number one, your base ISO is going to change. Depending on what Sony camera you use, if you're using the a7R2, it's going to be, I believe, 800. If you're using the a7S2, it's going to be 1600. Or even if you're using the original a7S, your base ISO is going to be 3200. So what does this mean? It means that if you're shooting outside in broad daylight, you're probably going to want to use an ND filter or you're going to have to adjust your f-stop which is probably something that you don't want to use, especially if you want to get that shallow depth of field. So the most important thing whenever you're shooting S-Log3 footage is that you overexpose by at least two stops. So make sure you look at your light meter and make sure that it says two. Otherwise, if you underexpose, you're going to get a ton of grain in the shadows and that's something that you do not want. So anyhow, guys, let's go ahead and begin. So I have a couple of video files that I shot in S-Log3 and I'm going to preface by saying that the method I'm about to show you guys is completely unorthodox. So please take this with a grain of salt. Anyhow, let's go ahead and begin. So the very first thing that I like to do is I go into my color workspace and then I go into the curves tab. What I do like to use is I go into Lumetri scopes and make sure that waveform is turned on. Basically, you have a value from 0 to 100. 100 representing highlights, 0 representing shadows. You typically never want to go above 100 because you start to lose information. And the same goes for 0. Anything below 0, you'll start to lose information. So when you start doing your curve, and I'll show you guys, if I go completely extreme, look at, look at, my, um, look at my scopes. They're going above 100. That means I'm overblowing the image. Same thing goes the other way. If I start going down to the shadows, you can start seeing everything go below zero. Now you won't see anything below zero, but you'll start seeing like a flat image. So what you want to do is you want to have a nice little S curve where you don't go over uh, 100. And you'll start seeing here, like for example, this here, I guess, what is it, like the barber pole? And I'll show you guys, it'll spin. You can see that information right here. It's actually right here. Pay attention to this when I roll the footage. You'll start to see that spin. It's the barber pole spinning in a circle. Obviously, it has a white area, so that's typically going to be, because it's white, it's going to be, be on the higher side. So I wouldn't worry too much. Now let's go ahead and go to the uh, shadows area. So you have this nice little S curve. And you can see right here, I didn't go below zero, but I got pretty close. Sometimes I go more for the look and feel. So if it looks okay to me, then I just go with it. But in this case, you know, I'll show you guys what that means in case you want to use it. So right now, just right off the bat, just by me doing that, look at the difference. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the effect off. So that's before I did the S curve, and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. Immediately, it made a huge difference, and that's the S curve right there. Now from here, I go into basic color correction. So to me, I think I shot this a little bit on the cooler side. I should have shot a little bit warm, and that's okay, because I can just warm the image up just a hair. Probably about 9.5 is okay to me. 
The next thing I wanna do is you know, start going down the list. So exposure, I'm okay with the exposure, it's fine. Obviously, whenever you shoot in a log profile, you're not gonna have any saturation, there's no contrast, it's a very flat, you know, profile. So you wanna bring some of that contrast up. And again, I know I'm gonna say this probably 100 times, this will all depend on the look and feel that you want. Some people like myself, I'll raise my hand, I love contrasty images. So for me, if I go to, let's say, 100, to me, I love that look. I personally like that look. Some people say, no, that's too contrasty. Maybe they want to tone it down. Maybe they want to go to 40 or 50. This is all going to depend on how you like your image. So I'm going to leave it about 70, about 70. I think it's okay. Highlights, again, look and feel. I think the highlights might be a little bit too much. I'm not even going to look at the scopes anymore, so I'll just bring it down a, a, a hair. Shadows look fine to me, so I'm not even going to touch that. Whites, blacks, again, looks fine. Now, again, because it's logged, there's no like there's no saturation. Some people might look at this image and say, this looks great, They're, you don't need to add saturation. And once again, look and feel. Some people like a super saturated image. So if we go, we let's bump it to the extreme, to 200. Look at how, look at the difference between, you know, zero or excuse me, 100 to 200. And by the way, you see this yellow tint on the windows? That's actually true. When I shot this, there was a yellow tint on that window. But this might be a little bit too over-exaggerated when it comes to saturation. So you might want to tone it down. I'm probably going to go to maybe like 150. Again, there's really not a lot of saturation in log, in log files. Uh, so you want to bring that up. And then after that, what I like to do is I go into the Creative tab. And this is where you can add a LUT. Now, personally, I don't use that many LUTs. But there is one that I really like. And that's Fuji Eterna 250D. Now, obviously, it's a little bit too extreme, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down to maybe like 50%. And I'll go ahead and turn that off and on so you can see the difference a LUT can do. So that's with it on, and this is with it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. Again, it's gonna be look and feel and how you like it. So we'll leave that just for the sake of this demo. Uh, the other thing I like to do is obviously add sharpening because when you shoot in an S-log, there's really no sharpening there. So typically, I like to do about 20 to 25. In this case, I'll do 25. The more sharpening you add, it starts to look a little bit fake, so don't add too much. I wouldn't go above 25 personally, just for me. Vibrance, we're gonna pop the colors a little bit more, and I'll show you guys. I wanna show you guys the extreme uh, difference between you know, zero to, let's say, you know, 100. Look at the difference this makes. So you definitely don't wanna go 100. So I'll typically like to do about 30 to 40, depending on the image. So we'll leave it at 30. And then from here, you know, again, you can mess with the highlights, the shadow. This is all something that I've already covered in my color grading tutorial. So I'll leave that link down below if you guys want to check that out. But other than that, I'm going to say this is pretty much done. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and play this image so you guys can see uh, what it looks like. And I mean, the skin tones look great. I mean, the people look just exactly how I remember them. Obviously, a little bit more on the contrasty side. But here's where it starts to get interesting. If I take this exact image, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, you know, color grade that I did. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring it over here to this one that is completely flat. I haven't color graded this, and I'm gonna go ahead and just paste it, right? Look what happens. Oops, wrong one. Sorry, I co copied the wrong thing. Copy, there we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paste it. Look at that. That pretty much works. I mean, this looks great. Um, you could do this pretty much with all of your files. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste the color grade, and then I'm gonna show you before and after. So if you did it right, you should be able to just do this with all of your images. I'm gonna go ahead and just paste it here again. Now on this one, I can tell you the highlights to me look a little bit blown out, and then right here the shadows look like we need to bring them up. So that's all you need to do. If you need to just do that, just kill the highlights, bring those down, and then bring up the shadows a tad more. And maybe if you want the trees to pop a little bit more, just add a little bit more saturation. Boom, there we go. Simple as that. Next image, same thing. Let's go ahead and paste that exact grade that we just did and I'm gonna say the same thing as the previous one. I feel like the highlights, because I shot this directly towards the sun. So the highlights, bring those down, bring the shadows up a little bit more, maybe even the blacks, just the hair. And that's basically it. There it is, looks pretty good to me. Saturation, bring it back up just the hair, just so that the trees look a lot more you know, greener. No problem. Next image, the final one, go ahead and paste that. This one looks pretty good. I think that just the shadows need to come up just the hair. And that's basically it. I mean, S-Log3, even though it seems complicated, is really not. It's just a matter of, you know, working with it and, you know, fine-tuning little things here and there. And mainly just playing around with it and see what works uh, best for you guys. So hopefully this tutorial was, 
you know, something that will help you guys and not scare you whenever you're shooting S-Log3. And again, if you guys like these types of videos, you definitely, you know, did with the last video, share and like, because this is gonna show me that you guys wanna see more of these types of videos. Follow me on Snapchat, Instagram stories, everywhere at Mondo Bites if you guys wanna see behind the scenes. Thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one. Adios.